and that's that's the world we're creating with that is just ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> A lot of the work that we've seen you in before feels like you were intentionally selecting projects that made us stop and learn, you know, in a lot of cases. And I want to take some of them off just to remind people who are watching this. You have The Trial of the Chicago 7, Waves, Mudbound, 12 Years a Slave, Underground, Birth of a Nation, and so on. What's your selection uh, process like at this point in your career? And how did Cyrano align with what you're looking for? Um, I guess depending on where I'm at in my life or my in my career, a, a lot of elements come into play in terms of what am I trying to, sometimes it's more political moves and, and, mm -hmm. and where I want to be seen and how I want to be seen as Kelvin the artist. And then there's also stories that I really want to tell despite, you know, the politics of the industry. Mm -hmm. Um... And in the beginning, I think, you know, I always felt like I came in at a very specific time where they really wanted to know about me and, and, and young black men. They were really, you know, Michael B. Jordan really set us up with Fruitvale Station and being so pop compelling in that movie and that story um, that the market was like, we wanted Monster. And so, and I did Monster and we, we, we got into, you know, Tanya Lee Lewis. Which was a big hit at Sundance too that year, yes, by the way. Yes, and that yeah. really helped us, you know. Um, saying when it came to loose, it was about the conversation and 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 me wanting to explore what it meant to be 17 again and, and talking about my experience as a young black male. And then, you know, same with waves and, you know, people I've seen, friends I've met over the years. And, and now as I'm in this phase of my career, it is more so about spaces that I don't necessarily always see black, young black male leads in. And yeah. so that was where, where most of my... Um, energy was put towards and in, in, in trying to make Cyrano happen for me. Yeah, I know that totally makes sense because quite frankly, one of the things that I love best about Cyrano is the diversity without explanation, mm -hmm. you know, emphasis on the explanation, yes. although without explanation yes. part, you know, because we know that black people existed in the late 1800s, right. but we don't often see ourselves reflected, especially when it comes to the cinema um, at the time. Was that something that gravitated you towards this project too? Absolutely. Because I was like, I re read it and I was like, well, this is a love story. This is beautiful. I was like, this is a love story. And you want me to be the handsome guy. I'm good with that. Um, <laughs> to come in and to try to win over this beautiful woman and, 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 and prove her that I prove to her that, I, that I'm a love and I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm a worthy suitor. Um, and that was that was um, that was exciting to me, that that element of the musical of it all. And also being in a Joe Wright movie. And, and we all know Pride and Prejudice to be beautiful. Anna Karenina, Atonement. All these pictures look beautiful. I was like, if y'all can like me well, <laughs> then we got something. Because, and, and you know, one of the things Joe did ask me, he was like, do you think it's okay for us, me to cast you in this role? And I was like, well, yes, as long as, as long as you don't feel like you have to justify it. You know what I mean? Like you have to sit here and go and do a whole thing on Christian. I was like, it's fantasy. He was like, well, it is fantasy. I was like, and that's the... That's the thing, you know, we could, we could be in these spaces as long as, you know, we're mindful of who's playing the Brett, and you know what I mean, mm -hmm. or who else is around in the spaces. Um, and then certain, you know, also in terms of like not playing Christian to be some type of himbo who actually is not that smart, it's more so that he's a bit naive and mm -hmm. he just comes from a different background. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, all those things have to be taken care of in, in trying to play a role like this, but it, yeah. in the end, I think it worked out, yeah. Yeah, no, I love hearing the thoughtfulness behind it because often when we've seen other interpretations of this play, we kind of hate Christian, <laughs> but but you you like him and you and you still want to root for him. Like there's this conflict, I think, as as a viewer, you know, kind of watching this journey. Was Christian the role that you initially read for? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So so you went in knowing that it was, you know, it was going to be this. It was going to be this interesting reflection of diversity, but not a moment in the film where someone has to stop and say, like a Greek chorus, hey guys, Black people lived here during this time Right, period. right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know, you have achieved um, success very early in your career and you grew up in an arts household. Both your parents are musicians and you're a musician. What did you learn from your parents that that maybe you carry with you when you go on set right now? 
work ethic. You know, my parents were really hard workers and, um, and my dad had always taught me um, putting in the time and being very intentional about what you're working on in that moment. And so what I, what I bring to every job is I'm going to prep, I'm going to research, I'm going to read everything I can. I'm going to learn as much, as much as possible. And, you know, it's that 10,000 hours, you know, to become an expert type of thing. And so Mm -hmm. even, and also being very clear about what I'm focusing on, what I'm trying to achieve in storytelling. Um, Every scene is a story and there's a start, a beginning, middle and an end. Um, every movie has a beginning, every conversation, even almost every line, there's a story to be told. So I also learned that a lot from my, my, my parents in terms of um, even when, when I would play music, he was like, if you're going to if you're going to improvise or if you're going to play a line, a lick, if you're going to jump in on the song, you know, what are you ta- what are you saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to say yeah. something. So that has always um, been a huge part of my process as an actor and how I approach any project. So, and I, I just yeah, it's just hard work, hard work. Yeah, you know, this, I was saying this is the first, or I'm sorry, this is the second time that I know of where you get to kind of marry both acting and music together. But was there a point in your career where you said, I think acting is going to be the thing and I'm going to pursue that? And if so, how did you come up with that decision? Mm. Yeah, listen, I think for me with music, I loved it. I loved it so much. I wanted to be a singer. I, then I wanted to be a, a, a singer who played piano. And then I wanted to be a trumpet player. And I wanted to be like, you know, Kermit Ruffin, who's a, a well-known, like he performs at jazz fest, you know, he's, he's singing and playing trumpet and that type of vibe. And I started to find through that process, cause you know, my dad also, I would go to, I would go to school from, you know, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then I went to a jazz school from four to six. I went to jazz camp, two, three jazz camps every summer. I was constantly like studying music and I wasn't finding my voice artistically in it. Mm-hmm. I really was trying to communicate for some reason it wasn't landing. What I was trying to say just wasn't being heard. So I was like, that's not, it's not for me. That wasn't my gift. And I think acting kind of came to me in, a, in like an organic way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't seeking it, you know, I, and then I ended up being on this set and I've told the story a lot of times actually, but you know, anyway, I'll tell it again. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I ended up being on this set and of this movie and I, I met um I met so many great actors from Viola Davis to Chiwetel to Lupita to Alfred Woodard and they just always gave me so much encouragement um in terms of um and and, and, and the way they explained the, the craft the way they explained um what they what we do as artists or storytellers and I was like oh so it's still storytelling I, I thought it was just like a bunch of people just playing pretend. I don't know. I don't know what I thought it was, but mm-hmm. there's a there's a conversation involved. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love Miles Davis. That's why I love Charlie Parker. That's why I love John Coltrane. That's why I love Max Roach, these jazz musicians. You know, I I, I love the conversation around their work and, and what their lives were also dictating around the culture and the experiences that they were going to in New York or in you know Chicago or in New Orleans or whatever it is. And acting had that same um, power. Mm-hmm. um so yeah I, I started studying and that's when I was like okay I'm, I'm doing this I, it was after 12 years of slave honestly mm-hmm. so, yeah. it is the thought now that uh that you have our attention uh, but because of all of these uh film projects that you've helped bring to life to lean more into who you are as a musician mm, with music not, I, I haven't really it kind of just came in that came like with once again with Cyrano like even with the high note that was Godfather Harlem was I, I did want to do it because I wanted to play a musician and I wanted to work with Forrest and I sent in a tape and Forrest really responded to it and I was really flattered and so I was like I want to go on that journey with him and and and, and learn about this world um and I also wanted to see what TV looked like so there's a lot of pieces to it high note was I wanted to do a rom-com and be like the romantic funny guy like like nice you know what I mean nice guy that went you know same thing sort of yeah. and I wanted to work with Tracy yeah. and um so, and, and the music kind of comes with it being like, this is just also a part of my resume mm-hmm. and it helps me get the job in mm-hmm. spaces that maybe I wouldn't normally get the job. It becomes an asset, mm-hmm. um, which my dad always told me that he, he would always told me about Jamie Foxx and he would be like, you know, Jamie played piano and Jamie sang and like Jamie put out music for a long time and Jamie ended up going and acting, but it, it did not hurt that Jamie was a, a fantastic musician 
So he was yeah. like, don't ever let it go. And I think I, you know, I understand that now. It's like being a musician in, when I was younger has helped me get jobs now. Mm. So I used it as a, yeah, it's just, it's an extra little piece. <laughs> You know, what's so interesting is that I came into this conversation thinking we were going to talk about the intentionality that you have with regards to choosing roles that felt very powerful, but also, you know, just the, really this nice marriage of, of education and entertainment. But you keep saying that, you, that you, you picked certain roles because you wanted to work with certain people, which I'm really fascinated by. Tell me about that, you know, like, like what's kind of the strategy I think behind, you know, identifying, like, I would love to work with Tracy Ellis Ross, or I would love to work with Forrest Whitaker. Like, tell me more about, about that and kind of how that informs how you choose a role. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I remember my, I have two sisters and a mom, they watch girlfriends, you know, and I was <laughs> like, and I remember seeing it and I just mean like, Joan is so funny. And it's something, something, I love her light. I love Tracy's light. I love how, I also loved who she rep, who she came across as a, as a person on, on social media and in interviews. And I actually was really inspired by her, her spirit. And I was curious to, I, I read the high note and I remember thinking to myself, what a beautiful opportunity for Tracy to, to dive into um, her mother's experience as a black female artist in, in a time and being an, 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 um, an, an um, a mature uh, singer in the time mm -hmm. and what struggles she might go through. What a cool way to, to talk about that and still have Chase use her comedic chops because she's a brilliant comedic actress. Yeah. Um, what can I learn, you know? Same with Forrest, it was so much about what can I learn from this legend that I've watched in Last King of Scotland and, you know, and, and Bird, you know? You know, mm -hmm. what can I learn from this, from this man? And, and just be, what I've so much of my education, cause I've always wanted to go to like Juilliard and NYU and all these like schools to study. Cause I look at like Jonathan Majors and I look at, you know, Yaya Abdul Mateen. And I look at all these, you know, even, you know, I look at these, 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 my peers now and I've always had so much respect for them cause they got to study. And even, you know, from Viola to, you know, anyway, the list goes on. And I was like, well, my school is now going to work and making sure I'm choosing projects with people that I respect and admire and I can feel comfortable enough to ask questions and to, to watch them. And that's where I'll learn how to become the actor that I want to be and the storyteller that I want to be. I mean, look, it's plan paying off for you and then some because while people right now are talking about this really nice chemistry that you and, and Dinklage have in Cyrano, we also got to talk about the stuff you haven't even jumped into yet, but you're already, you know, working on with the Lion King prequel and the fact that you're playing Basquiat. I mean, tell me about those roles in those in those projects, because that just feels so enormous in scope and also so amazing. And I want to watch them right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm, I'm I, Lion King. I was just like, when I heard Barry was directing Lion King, I was like, oh, I got to. I was like, what Barry about to do with Lion King? You know, yes. just, I'm so curious. And, you know, that's also so you're playing Scar. We got to let people know that, too. <laughs> I'm playing Scar. It's so cool. You know, I, you know, Lion King came out in 94 and that's when I was born. And that was one of my favorite movies growing up. So and I've always, for some reason, the, the villains have always been more fascinating to me. I was like, I, I just love the character study and the mm -hmm. arc that they, they have to create in order to make that make sense. And in this, this level of empathy, you have to go deeper into your empathy, empathy you're like your, your well of empathy in yourself to, in order to play those characters. So it's been, it's been cool. I'm really excited about that. And obviously Basquiat, I'm, I'm like, it's the first time I'm producing anything. And I'm working with Julius, who did Loose with me, and we have such an incredible working relationship. That man is so smart and so just clear about what what he's trying to say in a film. And the move, the world we're creating with that is just, ah, I'm, so <laughs> I'm so excited. Look, we're at the point in the in the interview where I normally would ask, "What's next for you?" And what I want to be next for you is a quick nap because you <laughs> have so much. So much work on the horizon, but yeah. for the sake of formality, you know, what's next for you, Kelvin? What is it else that you want to add, you know, to your, to your very, very impressive resume uh, that you've racked up so far? I'm still on this journey of, of trying to um, place my, find myself in, in stories of different genres, like sci-fi and action films and, 
and thrillers and more horror films, you know, and, and just once again, I'm, I'm, I'm just really fascinated about what it looks like for me and to be in those spaces um, and to, to, to see if I can, sometimes I do want to explain what it's like for us to be in, in those spaces as well and, and do some movies where, where I do articulate that. Um, and then sometimes I just want to disappear and, and become a character in this in crazy world. So um, right, right now, I'm, I'm, this year I'm just prepping for Basquiat and I'm finishing The Lion King. But um, I am, I have some projects that I'm attached to and some stuff that I'm looking at that are more thrillers and action movies and, you know, stuff with me, like just doing some like sick tricks, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like some crazy stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at it. And we'll see what happens after that. And then so I'm gonna do a play. We just gotta wait for the headlines to come out then. We just gotta wait for that. That's what you're yeah, telling Yeah, exactly. <laughs> stay tuned, stay tuned. <laughs> That was amazing. Calvin, I am so glad that we finally were able to connect. Yeah, Thank you so too. much for doing this today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Absolutely appreciate you.